We're going to be answering a questions that's related to inverse functions. Okay, so I have a number plane here, and I have a function fx equals 2, 1 over x plus 1. Now, firstly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and sketch this function. So it's in the form of a, hy uh, a hyperbola. Okay, so how I'm going to sketch this is I'm firstly just going to sketch my, just my basic hyperbola, 1 over x. Okay, so hopefully we should know how to draw this basic graph by now. Okay, so this is it. This is my hyperbola 1 over x. From there, if I want to sketch 1 over x plus 1, it's going to be the same graph, but it's going to be a little bit shifted. Okay, so it's going to be a translation to the left by one unit. Okay, so this is the graph. And from x to x plus 1, this graph is going to get shifted one unit to the left. Okay, and my asymptote will be the new one, x equals to negative 1. Okay, so that's how I sketch that function. Now in part b, it says to, well, it says state whether or not it is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so looking at this function, well, we're going to think about uh, what does it mean for a function to be one-to-one. -one. Okay, so it's pretty intuitive of its name. So for every x value that I have in my domain, I should have a corresponding one y value. Okay, so one way we can try and see if this is one-to-one -one is to try and do some sort of test. Okay, so what I'm going to do is draw a vertical line straight down. Okay, so at this little point here, or at that x value, so it looks like it's going to be at x equals to negative 2.5. Okay, so for that x value, if I just draw a straight line down, I see, oh, I get a y, a y value there. Okay, I get one y value there. Now, if I draw another line at, say, negative 1.5, if I go down, oh, I hit another uh, point. Okay, so for that x value, I have one y value again. Okay, so if I keep going across the graph, I can see for all these x values that I have in my domain, I will have just corresponding one y value. Okay, and that's what we want. Okay, so we can see, keep going down across the graph, and for each x value across the graph, I just simply just get one corresponding y value. Okay, so that's what it means to be a one-to-one -one function. So is this function one-to-one? -one? Yes, it's a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so that's related to uh, the next part, which is asking me to determine if an inverse function exists. Okay, so for an inverse function to exist, its original function has to be a one-to-one -one function. Okay, so in part C, yes, an inverse function exists. Okay, so that's purely just because um, the original function, which we have here, is a one-to-one -one function. Okay, which we'll try and sketch this later on. Now D, okay, so answering more questions about the function is asking me about the maximal domain. Okay, so what x values am I holding in this function? Okay, so we can kind of look at it from the function itself. Okay, so from 1 over x plus 1, the x values that I cannot have is going to be x is equal to negative 1. Okay, simply because my denominator cannot be equal to 0. Okay, so which means I don't want x to equal negative 1. Okay, because Dominant kind of cannot be equal to zero. Okay, so I can have every other x value, but x equals to negative one is not possible. And also we have two different notations here. Okay, well that's just x equals to negative can't equal to negative one, but this is something called set notation. Okay, so just depending on your textbook or your school, okay, I want you to use the appropriate um, notation to answer these questions. Now let's have a look at range. So finding the maximal range for this function. So what y values can this function hold? Okay, or can it uh, give. Okay, so we can answer that just looking at the graph. Okay, so when we look at the graph, okay, we have a lot of y values here. Okay, we've got a lot of y values, but just at y equals to zero, we're never going to have a value there. Okay, so for my maximal range, y does not equal to zero, or y cannot equal to zero. Okay, so every, every y value except for that. So I'm going to leave those two answers up here while we move on to part f. So part f tells me to sketch that inverse function that we found earlier. Okay, so we showed that it exists. Uh, but let's try and sketch it. So an inverse function is actually just an interchanging between the x and y values. Okay, we're just swapping them around. So how do we how do we um, use that to draw? Okay, well I'm going to simply draw my y equals to x graph. Okay, just a line. Okay, I'm going to have a dotted line there, and I'm literally going to interchange my x and y values by reflecting it off that y equals to x line. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to want you to have a look. And I want you to keep an eye on, uh, keep a focused eye on your solid yellow line. Okay, that's my inverse function. And this dotted line is my new asymptote. Okay, so what I've done is I ref I've reflected it off that y equals to x graph, or that line. Okay, so that's how I sketch my inverse function. Okay, from there we can try and answer some domain and range questions. So in part g, it asks me to find the domain of my new inverse function. 
Okay, so I want you to have a look at the graph and we can probably answer the question. Okay, so x cannot equal to zero. Okay, so we can just see, okay, we don't have any values for x equals to zero, then for the domain, we have x equals or cannot equal to zero. And also the range, so finding the range of my inverse function, again, we can look at the graph to answer that. X cannot, sorry, Y cannot equal to negative one. Okay, so we have all the Y values. How about negative one? We don't have um, any, val any values there. Okay, so that's the range. Now we can see from the domain and range of my inverse, and you have a look up here, the domain and range of my original function. Okay, they look very similar in that the domain here, okay, or the domain of my original function is my new range of my inverse function. And similarly, the range of my original function is the domain of my new inverse function. Okay, so that's what is we're talking about about inverse functions.